Hey guys, let me know what you think by liking and commenting, and it really helps me and this channel out when you subscribe, so please click that button. Thanks a bunch! everyone. In 2019, I saw a posting on Facebook from Accuracale UK about these trans penny? Trans penine? Uh, yeah, whatever. Anyway, they look pretty cool. I assume this was the cab car, and I have a thing for cab cars and running trains backwards. So I'm like, well, that, that looks pretty neat. So I went and looked it up. And what do you know, these things actually have a really cool paint scheme. And the locomotive that hauls these things around looks pretty neat too. And they're pretty short trains, so I figured, yeah, that, uh, that'll work. It's a pretty, pretty neat looking deal there. So I went ahead and put a pre-order in, but then I had to go looking for a locomotive and Accurate Scale informed me that they would not be making a locomotive, but directed me to Dapple. So um, sure enough, I picked one of those up. So I'm gonna talk about both of those today. Well, not surprisingly, these came a few weeks after my Caledonian sleepers, and if you've seen that video, that review, this is not going to be a ton different for what it's worth. The cars come in this sturdy, pretty chunky box. It's really nice. It's a really nice box, actually. So we pull the foam off of here, and there they are. And I'm curious to see what kind of differences there are going to be, particularly in the couplings, maybe, maybe some uh, with the fact that they're going to use the wand again. Do not like the wand whatsoever, as you probably know. All right, we got the couplers, and it looks like, unlike in the Caledonian sleepers, they are actually going to give us enough couplers to couple all these together if we want. And so hopefully the... <laughs> it was a weird snafu with the Caledonian sleepers. Here we go. Nice little history. Okay. Parts diagram. Excellent, excellent documentation. And the wand... I... Yeah... So you use the wand for sure to do the interior lights, and then it says for the cab interior light, it says to use the wand also. But that doesn't tell me anything about the directional lights at the head, or I guess the tail of the control car. Hmm, I'm gonna have to see about that. How are the directions? I certainly don't want it to be like that rapido thing. We had to try to wave it. Okay, we got the number boards, just like we did in the Caledonian sleepers. And again, you choose which way the train is running. Looks like these are going to be really similar, except, of course, for the paint scheme. So let's go ahead and just put those aside, and here we go. Nice interiors, as per usual, and the exterior underbody details look pretty much the same. They're very nice. I really appreciate it. Here are the end and the end diaphragms. Pretty good. Lots of nice details, and they do have the magnetic couplers, but the magnetic couplers are different on these than they were on the Caledonian sleeper, at least different in appearance anyway. Let's take a look again. Nice separately applied details. Nice, I like the etched grates there. Very, very cool. These are some of the best cars that I own, um, particularly when it comes to top side details. The underside, not a lot of piping or anything, but that's actually fine with me. And bearinged wheels. If there's the one thing about these cars and about Acura scale, that they made an excellent decision to use bearing wheels. Very, very good on you for that. I wish more passenger cars would have come with those. Excellent idea. All right, here we go. So yeah, pretty much the same as the Caledonians. Looks a little bit different because I guess the air is a little bit different since they're not sleeping cars. Let's tear into the rest of these here. Again, more number boards, take this off. You know, I like the interiors. Looks like they're at least two color. Different color for the seats and for the tables. Excellent, very good idea. What am I complaining? I don't know, I, one of the areas of improvement I think for the Caledonian sleepers was that the interiors were kind of low resolution, for the lack of a better way to put it. I mean, these I think are detailed enough and uh, we can put, oh, scale figures into them. They'll look good sitting in there. So there we go, nice door details, really, really nice. I'm gonna skip to the cab car here pretty much right away because I think the, my review is gonna be similar to the Caledonian sleepers in terms of the rest. So there we go. Some looks like I'm gonna have to put in the actual destination board. I guess that makes sense. And here we go. Here's the cab car. And there we have it. We've got a nicely detailed cab car, but okay, there is no friction switch on the bottom. So I am going to guess that, uh, let's see, I have a DCC track. So I'm going to guess that there's going to be a lot of 
fuzzy, like a light flickering. Okay, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. But in general, guys, friction switch or something so that the lights don't just sit there and buzz along with the bipolar DC current that's going on. The one thing I did is I immediately went out and bought a Class 68 and I found one from Dapol called the Splendid. I really didn't know anything about these. I figure as long as the paint schemes lined up, I would be fine. And I bought the DCC fitted version. We're gonna find out why that's actually a problem for me here in a second. So 68027 Trans Pennine Express. So very good. Uh, I'm glad these were available. And the reason I picked this up immediately after I put in my pre-order or at least immediately when this was available. And the reason why is I didn't want to get stuck while everybody got their cars and all of a sudden everybody bought out all the class 68s. So I wanted to make sure I had one. There's some nice, just some really brief documentation. And at this point, uh, I knew that this had DCC, but what I didn't realize is that this thing wasn't DCC sound. And I'm like, whoops. Didn't, uh, I guess I kind of blew that one. So I was looking all over for the sound functions, couldn't find them, and I finally realized, oh man, reason why is I didn't order the sound version. So here we go, just some more nice documentation. Yep, yep, yeah, super, so great. All right, let's get to the thing itself. We've got some nice pieces, yeah, probably won't get into that bag. It seems like O scales a little bit better about putting on a lot of the details that you need up front. What is this? Oh, there's the blanking plug for the non-sound DCC coder that I had <laughs> installed. So, whoops. Let's go ahead and get the thing out itself, and there it is. Okay, very nice. It has separately applied vents. Very nice. Pretty cool. Ooh, it's got... Okay, well, we'll have to see here if I'm going to keep using the tension lock couplers. Uh, people who are into this, maybe it's about time to give up the tension lock couplers. Since it has an NEM pocket, you can put one on later if you want. Pretty nice interior. There's a nice big spot for a speaker, and then I'm going to have to replace this with a lock sound, 21 pin, and then a bunch of switches. So, okay, we'll see how that goes. And the locomotive is a class 68. And it uses a Caterpillar engine. Let's see here. Caterpillar C17516. So we're going to be able to find a lock sound program with that, or am I going to have to kind of get close with something? And sure enough, when I looked up the locomotive, the Stadler Euro Dual had that exact engine. There it is Caterpillar Cat C17516 diesel engine. So that's perfect. Went ahead and downloaded that and installed it. And there's a couple caveats here, but it'll be the correct engine. But what you need to do is you need to basically blank out F4 because Class 68 is not going to have an electric mode. Number one is absolutely fine since that's what you need. You need the diesel engine, but go ahead and just shut either just completely get rid of F4 or turn the volume down however you want to do it. It's absolutely fine with me, but that's what I did. What's interesting, I saw this was lock sound, uh, lock sound 5 factory equipped sounds. I assume that's for SID models. And a lot of times these factory equipped sounds will not program onto a regular lock sound chip. Well, sure enough, this one did. So there was no problem. All right, we look at the paint schemes. The DAP holes on top, the accurate scales on bottom. And if you look, they're not quite the same the, in general, the DAP hole is a little bit warmer, but a little less saturated. So, and a three foot viewing distance or greater, this is not gonna be a problem, but if you're a super stickler, you're not exact. It might be even more visible here. Less saturation on the left, more on the right, but the one on the left is warmer in tone. Uh, it's not a big deal to me, but if, the, if you're a stickler for this kind of thing, then that's what you're going to get. So it should be all right, though. Like I said, from normal viewing angle, won't be a problem at all. The cab control car is a simple pry and pull, so it's absolutely no problem to get in there. You don't have to take off any screws or anything like that. In fact, you can just even pry one side of it and then kind of start rocking it, and it'll start coming apart all on its own. So it's pretty easy. There we go. Came apart. 
and we look and there is the capacitor and there is the DC. Well, I guess that's actually just a blanking plug and I can see the hall switch in there. So, hmm, kind of see where this goes. Let's pop it on the track and see if I'm right about the buzzy. Yeah, there it is. It's not really taking the whole DCC thing into account. It's not trying to rectify the signal in any way. It's just letting it come through. So this cab car is not particularly made for DCC right out of the box. And we'll wave it over there and waving it does help with the lights and for that cab light, but it doesn't help at all with the directional lights or any of the lights, the headlight up there. Um, so that really kind of sucks. Guys, either friction switch or something, but just letting the front lights sit there and buzz, that's that's just not cool. It's, it's 2023. Let's go ahead and get this right. Now I have a lock sound FX decoder on order, but I, I wanted to see what ha would happen with a sound decoder. So I just happen to have a tsunami. I think it's a tsunami, just a regular tsunami that's designed for EMD 645 engines. So if we put it in there, we can see if we can actually hear anything. That's great, it actually has a speaker built in from the factory. Kudos and bravo for that. Excellent idea, uh, that works pretty well. So as soon as my lock sound FX gets here, which should probably be probably the day I release this, I will swap it out and I will be able to have sound directly from the factory. I like it, I like it a lot, good decision there. One thing I realized about this is it has really bad electrical continuity. Very, very bad electrical continuity. I've, I've never thought about putting a current keeper on a sound and function only chip, but it looks like I might actually have to do that. You can see that more clearly here in this slow run by, this nighttime run by, you can clearly see it flickering on and off. And that's, I don't know, that is some pretty bad design. They couldn't put a capacitor in between the pickups and the DCC chip because that would destroy the DCC signal, but I think they were half, they should have put in better contacts to begin with. One thing I spotted about the lighting was that the headlights and the taillights are a little bit dim, to be quite honest with you. This is them in full darkness, but when it's light, they're a little bit difficult to see. These and the headlights, with the exception of the top, so I guess the bright, or whatever the, the light is up there. That one seems to be pretty adequate, but the other ones, the two front lights, they're just, yeah, they're just a little bit dimmer than I think I would like. Now the actual lighting for the interiors is pretty much the same it is on the Caledonian. To me, I think they're very realistic. I think they're what, what most people would want if they're going for ultimate realism. However, I would prefer them to be brighter because I like to photograph things running at night. So I, you know, to me, that's not ideal, but I might be sort of the odd man out here. I think probably most people would opt for a little bit more realism, um, but you know, again, I like it so that it's a little showier. They don't have to be a lot brighter, but I think, yeah, I think if you really like realism, that this is gonna be about the right brightness level for you. Necro scales are pretty much realistically uh, warm, but the ones on the damp hole are too cool, and because of that, they don't match up particularly well. If this is something that would bother you, well, you may want to consider it, I guess. You can see the interior there of the damp hole car, but definitely a lot cooler, much, much cooler than the Acura scales that you can see here. I guess it's a minor criticism, but the destination board may be the correct size and setback if you're talking about real life, but because it's so small and so set back, it's really difficult to see. And I think they probably should have broke with scale here and maybe pushed it a little bit more forward or made the sign a little bit bigger or something like that, but I think it's a little bit wasted. And as you can see here, the cab interior for the Acura scale is a little bit more realistic and more detailed than the Dapples. 
So I, you know, again, you have to decide what's the correct thing for you. I certainly like the warmth and the amount of light and the detail and the accuracy scale, except for the headlights and the reverse lights. They're just a little too dim. One quick note about the Dapple is these cab lights, they're only controllable via a switch inside the, the shell, actually on the chassis. You saw all the switches. It's weird, you cannot control them through DCC. You can only control them with the switches. I've chosen the switch setting so that it's on when it's stationary and off when it's moving, but it's, it's a bizarre choice. I don't know why they did that. So out of the box, there is a lot of coupler height disagreement between the Dapol and Acuris scales, quite a bit actually. And I wasn't sure what kind of problems that would cause overall, and particularly when you're pushing this train set, but believe it or not, I never even got there because on the pull, the these would actually derail. And because there's so much metal on these bearing wheels, it would actually dump the whole track. It was awful. So first I tried some of my favorite, which are Fleischmann Profi couplers, but they were just too far offset and I would never get a very solid lock between the two. Then I tried these older style Fleischmann uh, tension lock couplers because they have such big mating surfaces for when you push. I tried it, it worked fine on the pole, but they did not push properly and we had the derailment problem again. So then I just tried the standard European flip latch coupler and what do you know, they, uh, they worked perfectly. No problems on pull or push with these things. They're designed to be a little bit sloppy and because of that they were able to not have any problems with the coupler height disagreement. So there you go, if you're having this problem, that's how I fixed it. Well, there you are. Um, I just meant to be a quick review. You know, again, if you want a little bit more detail and go see my Caledonian sleeper review, it's, it's pretty much the same because these are pretty much the same cars. I really like them for what it's worth. And I think, you know, overall, I'm definitely well pleased. The only complaints I have, I guess, are those dim headlights and reversing lamps. Just too dim. It, they're barely noticeable when the lights are on. Um, other than that, you know, I, again, it's, everything should be more DCC now. So they should have either figured out a way to, uh, I don't know, use a friction switch if you're going to do that. But I don't understand why the connectivity is so bad that I have that much flicker coming through the headlamps. It doesn't make any sense. Not sure what to do about that other than to put a current keeper on there or try to tie in electricity from perhaps, you know, maybe shunting through the capacitor and charging, I, I don't know. I'm gonna have to do something about that. That's really weird, especially if I have sound. The sound will cut in and out. So that seems to be a really huge oversight. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, the cars are pretty detailed, as you can see, they look really nice rolling by here. They're worn smooth and they sound really good from an aesthetics point of view. Um, the Dapol locomotive you hear or you see here is uh, pretty pretty adequate. I mean, I like it. It's really nicely detailed. It's not really a big focus of this because um, I think if you want to get this, this, that's the only choice that you have anyway. Um, other things, yeah, I think overall, I'm, these are really enjoyable. There's no doubt about that. Um, I wish I could figure out what Dapol was thinking with the weird switch arrangement for the cab light. I just don't understand that at all. But overall, if you purchase these, I think you'll be really happy with them, especially if the Trans Pennine Express is something that you enjoy. Of course, I've never been on it. I've never even seen it in person, but I like the way it looks. And that's pretty much my sole, my sole ask as far as what I want to run in my own place. All right, that's what I got for you today. I hope this helped you out if you were thinking about purchasing these. Hey, leave comments. I'd appreciate to know what you think about these. Like for me and subscribe if you don't mind. That helps me out a lot. And like always, happy model railroading. Take care. Stay safe. See you later. Bye for now.